Hello everyone on this rather gloomy Thursday morning. It's good to be with you. I guess there is much about Holy Week that is sort of gloomy, so the atmosphere today fits the moment. Uh, but blended with the gloom, of course, in the Holy Week events, uh, is God's redeeming activity, expressions of amazing love and a challenge to Christian people in all times and in all places to live faithfully. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday and my theme was talking about going public, moving from the rural communities in Galilee, 90 miles north of Jerusalem to the big city where everybody was gathering for Passover celebration. And the Roman colonial police force is very nervous because they're expecting some terrorist activity. Uh, the gospel then present, or the gospels present us with several Holy Week stories. And uh, I find myself having a little skepticism around some of them because you do wonder who was reporting on what happened. Um, they, they take place in situations, well, like with the Roman governor, who would have been there to report on that? So, uh, all, and all these stories were written long after the events they describe and so I, I find in them more of a theological purpose than I do a uh, recording of history. So today is what we call Maundy Thursday or Holy Thursday. Um, Jesus shares uh, what appears to be in John's Gospel a Passover celebration, a meal with his disciples. And he's very deliberate during the meal. He takes the bread and breaks the bread and then takes the cup of wine from the table and has everybody share it. And together they create a ritual of remembering on this Holy Thursday. Before the meal starts even, something very significant happens because Jesus very deliberately makes a point of washing the disciples' feet, which is what in his time would be the job of a servant. So Jesus was clearly putting himself in a servant role to his disciples. And then after the meal in the Gospel of John in the story, uh, which is a long uh, narrative for a Gospel, um, we have Jesus giving to the disciples what he calls a new commandment. And the com commandment simply is this, love each other love each other and i get a sense that this really is the high moment for the gospel writer this is really jesus's primary teaching to love each other and that's why it's called maundy thursday it actually comes from a latin word mandatum we get the english word mandate from it but it's a commandment in, in latin so this is commandment thursday Please do come to church this evening for our Maundy Thursday service. The weather may not be great, but that is, is fine. Um, remind yourself of the warmth and the intimacy of Jesus with his disciples as they gathered together for that Passover meal. And remind yourself too uh, that Jesus said to love each other. That's what it's all about. And that's why we build in churches a community of family, of, of loving support for each other. Uh, at, and it's good to be reminded of those family members with whom you have such a, a deep connection and covenant relationship. Jesus tells us to love one another. And the best way to do it is to get together and share in the communion service together. Tomorrow, as you know, is Good Friday. And uh, yes, a complicated day with so many things happening and, and such horror um, in the gospel stories of what happened. Jesus, this um, completely good human being enshrining the, uh, the spirit of God is tortured horribly and then executed by the Roman Roman governor, really. Uh, it's the 
it's Roman law that's used to kill him because that they're the only people who could do a crucifixion and the primary reason for that is insurrection so Jesus was seen as a political threat um, beliefs about the significance of the crucifixion are very diverse lots of people have different ideas about it but whatever you believe it's an expression of supreme love unconditional unrepentant complete love of God uh, we'll be marking Good Friday with a very powerful worship service where we uh, welcome our friends from the sister churches in the Living Waters circuit and we've divided it up between all the churches and different lay people from different churches will be bringing a personal reflection on each of the seven last words of Jesus. It promises to be a beautiful service so do please come tomorrow at noon and there will be lots of music and choir singing and so on so uh, do please plan to be there tomorrow at noon and then of course we'll have Easter Day Easter Day will be a great celebration it looks as though the weather's going to be good on Easter and it's uh, which is very appropriate for the day and uh, we all need in these times to hear a message that's the promise of new life and hope We'll have lots of musicians, including brass quartet. So this is a great time to invite family, friends, and neighbors to come and join you. I want to share a, a poem. It's called a sonnet for Maundy Thursday. And it says this, well, it's by Malcolm Gite. Here is the source of every sacrament the all-transforming presence of the Lord, replenishing our every element, remaking us in God's creative word. For here the earth herself gives bread and wine, the air delights to bear the spirit's speech, the fire dances where the candles shine, the waters cleanse us with God's gentle touch. And here God shows the full extent of love to us whose love is always incomplete. In vain we search the heavens high above. The God of love is kneeling at our feet. Though we betray him, though it is the night, he meets us here and loves us into light. Let's pray together. Having God, we thank you that you have brought us this far by faith and brought us into this Holy Week experience. And we pray that we may immerse ourselves in the, the story of the events of this week in such a way that our own faith may come alive and that we may find ourselves drawn again to the power of your love as Jesus instructs us to love each other. May we love each other with a tenderness uh, and with a confidence and with a a willingness to forgive, a willingness to be open and to hear each other. And so we pray your blessing on the people of Ukraine. We pray for peace. We pray for our city and community and we pray that this may be a place uh, of peace and of hope for all of your children. And we pray for those we know who need our prayers today, including those on our church's prayer list. We pray that we may surround one another with your love, with your grace and your peace. And I close with a prayer of St. Alcan of York that comes from the 8th century. Eternal light shine into our hearts. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal pity, have mercy upon us, that with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, we may seek your face and be brought by your infinite mercy to your holy presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. I wish you God's richest blessing as you move through this season of Holy Week. Amen. <laughs>